Hi, welcome to the part seven of this playlist. We will look at Amazon time stream in this part. Please remember this playlist is useful for Solution Architect Associate C03 as well as Solution Architect Professional C01 and 02 certifications. Now C02 would be launched in October. I have created a video on when SAP C01 would expire. You can go through that. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. So please remember these are all contents that I am giving free of cost. It takes a lot of hard work to create these. Please hit the subscribe button and that would be appreciated. Now when we talk about time stream, we are talking about what sort of data? What does time stream mean? It is a sequence of data points that is recorded over a time interval. For example, stock prices. If you are a trader or you invest in stocks, you would see that the stock prices keeps changing over a period of time. You see this? The moment I'm moving my cursor, you can see at that point in time what was the price. Now, when you have such data, there are two things which is very special of such data. First, the volume would be very high because at every point you are capturing it. Second, you will have to keep all states of data. Like what was the stock price at 11 a.m.? What was the stock price at say 1.30 p.m. when the Europe market opens? So when you have such data sets where it not only the final price of the stocks, but all the intermediate price changes over the day has to be stored. That means the volume of data would be very high. So that is the second feature of such data sets that the volumes are very high. So where would you save this real time data, which is time series based? Will you save it in RDS, which is a modern database, which is RDBMS, that is relational database. Would you put the data in Redshift, which is a database to store data warehouse. It's a cloud data warehouse. Would you store it on Aurora, which is also RDBMS, that is relational database. So point one, you cannot store it on relational databases because your query performance will not be high there. And that is the reason Amazon has put this product called time stream. In the old days, we had a database called Informix. It was a time series solution. So time stream is also a time series solution from Amazon. This is a flow typically how data flows to time stream. You see this, you have IoT devices on the left hand side. Then you have some connectors and functions. You will connect, you will have some basic processing using Lambda and Kinesis. And these will be inputted to Amazon time stream. After that, you can either use QuickSight to create reports on this time stream data. Or you can use SageMaker. Why? What will you do with SageMaker? You will create and deploy machine learning models. You also have provision to connect to other applications using JDBC drivers. Okay, so you can also connect to Tableau. You can connect to Salesforce. And you can connect to Grafana. So Grafana is a Amazon product. It was a different product, but Amazon acquired it. And it is used for data visualization on operational metrics, logs and so on. For example, you have your EC2 instances and there are a lot of logs. If you want to monitor that and sorry, if you want to create a data visualization on top of that, then you can use Grafana. So now it is clear where in the overall architecture time stream fits in. Okay. See, this product can store and analyze trillions of events per day. Trillions. So you imagine why we cannot save it in the database, like relational database. Because when you try to 
fire queries for example you put a bi application on top of it and when the bi application fires queries the database will die relational databases like sql server oracle will die so time stream is the apt database and what happens is time stream gives you thousand times faster performance thousand times compared to relational databases thousand times and it costs one tenth why it costs one tenth and why it gives thousand times faster performance it is fast because it keeps the recent data in memory so if the recent data is in memory it will operate pretty fast now mind you any such applications or services which is heavy on memory you will have to provision a lot of space in the ram so that is taken care of automatically by time stream another beauty of time stream is it is serverless and remember this will come in the certification exam this service is serverless time stream see any service in aws world whichever says that it is scalable to infinite capacity and it is highly performant there are high chances these are serverless please mark this word if any service is providing high performance and high scale scalability that means it should be serverless the beauty with time stream is that you know it is a decoupled architecture what you mean by decoupled architecture is that your data ingestion storage and query processing systems these are all three separate units in time stream and you can scale up and down these independently that's why we say virtually infinite highly scalable so that means if your iot is pushing for example 1000 messages per second time stream can hold it if the iot is pushing 10000 messages per minute time stream can still hold it it will scale up to hold those data sets similarly if quick site there are 100 users and firing 100 queries time stream would cater to that but if the number of logged in users concurrent users suppose it increases to 10000 time stream would automatically scale up scale up which piece it will scale up the query processing system so that your queries would run faster now if you are using aurora or rds or any rdbms that is relational systems relational databases the schema is hard coded that means you first have to define the data definition language ddl you have create table table name and so on and that is how your data would be stored but in this case it is pretty dynamic what happens is the schema is generated dynamically based on the attributes coming in from your time series data that based on whatever data sets are coming through this this schema would automatically adapt so that it gets tuned to these data sets and it will start storing it okay and it is incremental as well so, so for example in today's world in the rdbms system if you had 10 fields in a table for example employee table had 10 fields and you want to add two more fields so that means somebody your dba or etc will have to model it add two fields and your dba will have to alter fire alter table statements to add those fields and if those are uh, not null fields then you will have to add some data to all the existing data rows and that is not a very easy thing to do but the beauty of time stream is that it is incremental that means if you started today with 10 fields and 6 months down the line you get four more fields added you don't have to worry about the previous records that exist it it will adjust automatically now we all know that time stream is very cost effective how see we saw here it is 1/10th of the cost of relational databases so the first thing is it is serverless you can decouple it has a decoupled serverless that means uh, scale up architecture decoupled the other thing is whenever you are using serverless you have the opportunity to switch on and switch off the service just like your switchboard the switches to switch off the fan and bulbs it is similar to that so the cost is also kept low because your historical data is moved to a cost optimized storage so we know that all the 
recent data is kept in memory so that it is faster what is faster the curing is faster. but all the historical data for example the iot data it bought in data today you are interested with data for the last one week but what happens to the data which is one month two month one year old it is all stored in the historical data set in cost optimized storage tires it can be magnetic tapes and so on and both the recent data and historical data can be accessed by using the query engine you can analyze the recent data the historical data and you don't have to explicitly define what you're trying to access you just fire your queries and time stream is very smart to understand whether it has to get that data from in memory or it has to get the data from cost optimized tire and this process is called life data life cycle management when the data becomes old just like in aws s3 you have storage classes similar to that you see s3 they have different storage classes intelligent tire standard ia one zone ia and so on you have life cycle policies here also so that once the data gets old you use storage tiring and how do you use it you will move it to the magnetic store for historical data that way the storage cost of storing the data in magnetic store is very less and you can create policies you can configure the policies so that automatically that movement is done you don't have to do anything very important for the certification exam is time stream the data is always encrypted it is encrypted at rest and in transit that means when the data is stored here in the database it is at rest at rest means it is sleeping and it is stored here it will be encrypted plus when the data is moving coming to this database and moving out of this it is still encrypted that is called encryption in motion or encryption in transit and you can use cmk for key management service okay and this encryption is done inside the magnetic store as well as memory now what are the use cases you have three use cases one is the iot apps use case second is devops apps use case and third is analytics apps use case if you see the devops use case here this is how it works you have some data streams here and uh, the data is collected the time series data is collected here it is put inside amazon time stream and then you plug these tools to report out of it for the analytics app also it works this way you have the source then you plug kinesis or something you massage the data to some extent you put kinesis data analytics uh, you massage it further and then you enter the data in amazon time stream after that you can plug reporting applications or other applications and fetch the data or do analysis on that data see these are some of the important uh, partners of time stream one is trend miner so trend miner is a software easy industrial analytics platform for industry so if you see where is this uh, feature useful it is useful for shop floors or industries industrial platforms manufacturing platforms and so on where you have so many devices and you have to constantly monitor these devices for failures then time stream integrates uh, with tensor iot so tensor is a is a advanced consulting partner it provides end to end products you must be knowing about tensor flows as well and it it is majorly into machine learning artificial intelligence so you can plug tensor iot or tensor flow on uh, uh, time stream and you can do a lot of model building machine learning and so on now the beauty of time stream is the data is partitioned this is very important from the certification standpoint the storage what is done it is done by time and the attributes of data for example you can decide those attributes and that will accelerate your data access using purpose built index you always know from the rdbms world that indexes are very useful indexes are just like the indexes in your textbooks if you want to a particular page you can just refer the index and go to that particular page for that topic similar to that index is very useful in the relational database world similar to relational database anyone in time stream they have purpose built indexes now using time stream you can run queries which are in tens of gigabytes this is very important you can run it with monster size data tens of gigabytes is monster size data and what is the response you can get you can get it in milliseconds that is from the memory store and if you are firing it from the historical store you can analyze terabytes of time series data from the magnetic store so from the magnetic store you can go to terabyte from the memory you can go to gigabyte why because in memory obviously you can store less and in your magnetic stores you can store more one more thing which is important from the certification standpoint is scheduled queries this will help you further improve the query performance why because it will calculate and store the aggregates so that will help you uh, improve the performance because the data is already rolled up you are not doing going to roll up roll up means 
in the RDBMS world, you are applying group by functions. Group by functions are very expensive. It hampers the performance of the database. But if you already do the rollup, then your query performance will be faster. And it is very useful if you are creating operational dashboards, business reports, and device monitoring systems applications, which reads data from time stream. Now the time times that you are using to write to the database, it supports nanosecond granularity. That means you can, you know, in the IoT world, when you are capturing the data from different devices, for example, sensors, you are you can capture it up to nanoseconds. Ideally, many people may say that, okay, even if it captures per second, I'm fine. But even if you want to capture it for nanoseconds, for example, sometimes uh, there are some systems in, in, in the aerospace world, in the flights, which requires nanosecond level granularity. And it supports connecting through JDBC drivers. So there are some applications, uh, business intelligence applications and other applications that can be connected using JDBC driver. Like I explained here, you can use JDBC and you can connect to applications, BI applications like Tableau. If you don't want to use Tableau, you can directly use QuickSight. If you want to use TensorFlow, you can use JDBC and use TensorFlow. If you want to use SageMaker instead of TensorFlow, you can directly connect using SageMaker. Now the time stream, it is compliant with all of the different guidelines like HIPAA, PCC IDS, FedRAMP, and so on. So this is also important from a certification standpoint. It has various levels of compliance. So this brings us to the end of this video part. Please subscribe to my channel. Subscription is very important. I'm putting in a lot of effort to bring this content to you guys. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Otherwise, you know why I am doing this hard work. This brings us to the end of this part. Very important topics for Solution Architect Associate 03 and Solution Architect Professional C01 and 02. Even though 02 is going to come from October, but do prepare on these topics. See you in the next part.